welcome to Jaja Academy Lahore. I am Tabinda Etizal. Today we shall discuss data types used in C programming language. Let's define data type. Data type provides two types of information. Number one, it specifies the type of data that can be stored in a variable. Number two, the data type tells compiler to allocate memory space for a variable. The question is where to use data type? Whenever we declare an identifier, identifier may be a constant, a function's name or a variable. Then we have to provide the data type of an identifier. For instance, in the case of variable declaration, it is mandatory to provide data type of the variable. This is the syntax of variable declaration where we provide two types of information. Number one, the data type of the variable which we are going to declare in our program. For example, I want to introduce or I want to declare a variable x in my program and I want to store numeric value 10 in my x variable. So what will I do? I'll declare the variable x by using the syntax of variable declaration. So I have written x as a name of variable and along with this variable name, I have to provide, it is mandatory to provide its data type, which depends on the requirements of user. And being a user, I want to store 10 in my x variable. So I will choose numeric data type and integer data type is the data type which supports numeric values. I int int is a keyword that represents the integer data type. So I will write int x. Now my x variable has been declared as an integer variable. And this line is providing two types of information. Number one, x variable will store numeric data because it is of integer data type. And the second information it is providing is x variable requires two bytes in memory. Why the two bytes? It is because the integer data type consumes two bytes in memory. So, in response to this line, inside memory, two bytes of memory is allocated to the x variable. And in this memory space or in this variable, I can store numeric values only. It will not support other than the numeric data. So, it was the basic introduction of data type. Now, let's discuss different types of data types that are used in C programming language. The data types have two main categories. Number one is primitive data type and the other is user defined data type. First we will discuss primitive data type. The primitive data type is further divided into four categories. Number one integer data type, second is float data type, third is character data type, and the last one is void data type. The keyword int 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 keyword is used to represent the integer data type and it is further divided into three subcategories short, int and long. The integer data type is used to store numeric data. It cannot store the fractional values. It can store only the whole numbers. Whole numbers are the numbers which do not have fractional part or decimal part. So all numeric values are stored in integer data type. And on the basis of storage capacity, the integer data type is further divided into three categories, short and int and long int. 
all these subcategories are used to store numeric data but their storage capacity may differ from each other the short int is used to store integer values which are short in size for example i want to store 10 in an integer variable then i'll use short or int data type i won't go for long data type i'll use long data type when i have to store large numeric values the short in and all these three subcategories are further divided into two two categories short is divided into signed short and unsigned short now what is the difference between signed keyword and unsigned keyword signed short data type is used to store positive numeric values as well as the negative numeric values it means i can store the positive whole numbers and the negative whole numbers by using signed short data type and unsigned means i can store only positive values i cannot store negative integer or negative numeric values in unsigned data type so this is the main difference between signed and unsigned data types then comes signed integer and unsigned integer again the difference is same as it was there in signed short and unsigned short signed integer will store positive values positive numeric values and negative numeric values but unsigned integer can store only positive values i cannot store any negative value in an unsigned data type next type is long integer the long integer is again divided into signed long and unsigned long signed long is capable of storing positive numeric values and negative numeric values but unsigned long will store positive values only now let's see how much memory is consumed by these data types the short data type whether it is a signed or unsigned consumes two bytes in memory if i declare a variable as short integer then it will consume two bytes in memory similarly integer or int whether it is a signed integer or an unsigned integer both will consume two bytes in memory this figure may vary from two to four bytes depending on the system specifications and depending on the compiler being used so integer data type may vary from two to four bytes the next data type is long integer long int also consumes four bytes in memory signed long as well as unsigned long integer occupies four bytes in computer memory now let's move to the second primitive data type which is float as we discussed the integer data type can store only whole numbers now if we want to store fractional values or the values with decimal numbers will opt for float data type a float data type is used to store floating point numbers and floating point numbers are the numbers with fractional values for example 10.5 2.5 and such fractional values are not supported by integer variable so we can store fractional values by using floating point numbers float data type the float data type is also divided into three subcategories depending on the memory they consume for instance float data type simple float data type consumes four bytes in memory then comes double data type if we have larger fractional values which are not supported by float or which requires more memory space than four bytes then we will go for double data type and the double data type consumes eight bytes in memory now if we have a number that requires more than eight bytes in memory 
which means the number is too large to save in 8 bytes and it requires more than 8 bytes in memory. Then we will go for long double which consumes 10 bytes in memory. The next data type is character data type and the keyword used to represent character data type is char pronounced as char. The char data type or character data type is further divided into two categories signed character and unsigned character. One thing is noticeable in float data type I have not specified signed or unsigned keywords here. It is because the float data type does not support signed or unsigned with float data type. Remember one thing if we do not mention signed or unsigned keywords then it is understood that the data type is signed data type and it supports both the positive and negative values. For instance I have not mentioned here whether the float variable is signed or unsigned. So it must be understood for you that the float data type is signed data type and we do not need to mention the signed keyword but if a data type is unsigned data type then we have to mention the keyword unsigned with them because it specifies that because it specifies that we cannot store negative values in this data type it supports positive values only as the floating point numbers or the float data type supports both positive and negative numbers so we have not mentioned here the sign type the sign keyword but not mentioning the sign keyword in turn tells you that this data type is signed data type it is just like when we write 5 then it is understood that it is a positive 5 number unless we mention the negative sign with a value we consider it a positive value similarly unless and until unsigned is mentioned with a data type that data type is considered as a signed data type so float double and long double all three are signed data types and we cannot use the unsigned keyword with them because we cannot restrict the floating point numbers to positive numbers only we cannot restrict the float data type to store positive numbers only but we can apply that restriction in integer data type okay let's move to the third data type which is character data type there are further two types of character data type signed character and unsigned character the keyword that is used to represent character data type is char char signed char and unsigned char and the character data type whether it is a signed character or unsigned character both consumes one byte in memory and we can restrict character data type to store positive characters only so when we don't want to restrict the character data type to store positive only then we don't need to mention signed character we will just write the keyword character and it will be understood that it is a signed character and it's going to store positive as well as negative character values. The next and last data type is void data type. It is also known as an empty data type and it is not used with variables or constants. It is used with functions only. We cannot use void data type with identifiers other than the function names. So these were the primitive data types. Now let's discuss the user defined data types the user defined data types are array struct union and enum all these data types are separate concepts and there are separate chapters on each concept so we will discuss them in later lectures in this lecture we shall focus on the primitive data types only now let's see some examples of primitive data types <laughs> 